Council and the City of Bisbee, County of Hershey's, and State of Arizona to be held on Tuesday, June 16, 2020 at 7 p.m. at the City Hall Building, 915 South Tomberville Road, Bisbee, Arizona. Ms. Cronin, would you please call the roll? Mayor Pro Tem Lewis Pollock. Here. Council Member Joni Giacomino. Here. Council Member Bill Higgins. Here. Mayor David M. Smith. Here. Council Member Leslie Johns. Here. Council Member Joan Hansen is excused. Council Member Anna Klein. City Staff, Teresa Coleman, City Manager. Ashley Coronado, City Clerk. Carrie Bagley, Finance Director. Joelle Landers, Personnel Director. Jesus Haro, Public Works Director. Albert E. Chavez, Police Chief. George Castillo, Fire Chief. James Ledbetter, City Attorney. Thank you, ma'am. For our uh, moment of silence, obviously I need to continue to discuss the COVID-19 situation affecting our county and certainly our city. Um, we have active cases present now in the city of Bisbee. Um, and I just uh, hope that everybody is taking the necessary precautions uh, when they're out in public uh, in uh, protecting themselves and others. So uh, with that, please join me for a minute uh, in remembrance of those COVID-19 patients, of which there are many that are no longer with us. Thank you. Would you please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? Thank you. Welcome staff, counselors, and uh, our uh, live stream watchers. I hope uh, everyone is well. I want to start off with a proclamation. This is a proclamation for the United States Army 245th birthday. Whereas on June 14, 1775, the Second Continental Congress representing the citizens of 13 American colonies authorized the establishment of the Continental Army, and whereas the collective expression of the pursuit of personal freedom that caused the authorization and organization of the United States Army led to the adoption of the Declaration of Independence and the modification of the new nation's basic principles and values in the Constitution, and whereas for the past 245 years, the U.S. Army's central mission has been to fight and win the national wars. And whereas the motto of duty, honor, and country is the creed by which the American soldier lives and serves. And whereas no matter what he, the cause, location, or magnitude of future conflicts, the nation can rely on the U.S. Army to produce well-trained, well-led, and highly motivated soldiers to carry out the missions entrusted to them. And whereas the components of the U.S. Army, to include the Arizona Army National Guard, the U.S. Army Reserves, and the regular Army, have contributed immensely to the COVID-19 response. Whereas members of the city of Bisbee have proudly served and made the ultimate sacrifice for our nation's freedom while serving in the United States Army and other branches of our national military. Now, therefore, I, David M. Smith, Mayor of the City of Bisbee, Arizona, do hereby proclaim June 14, 2020 to be the United States Army's 245th birthday and express appreciation on behalf of the City of Bisbee's people to the United States Army and to the dedication of soldiers who have served in it for the last 245 years that it has been in existence. In witness thereof, I have on there on two set my hand and cause the seal of the city of Bisbee to be affixed this June 16, 2020. David M. Smith, Mayor. Thank you. As far as announcements, um, as I briefly indicated, the, uh, the situation in the state is really brings up crickets, right? 
the, uh, the situation in uh, the state of Arizona particularly um, is uh, escalating. Uh, overnight we had over 2,000 more cases uh, and in the, our county we are still climbing daily. And um, so I just wanted to unfortunately announce that for those that aren't aware of that. Um, with that, um, I have written the uh, governor a letter that uh, went out today uh, requesting, indicating to the governor that not all sizes fit all and that cities um, should be able to decide their own fate um, and with their citizens' assistance having to do with uh, personal protection and uh, the inaction of uh, uh, shutdowns uh, and stoppages. And so I'm just indicating uh, quite honestly, other mayors have done this and it's been no good. I don't see that it necessarily will, but I believe that we needed to, I needed to voice that on behalf of the citizens of this group. So we shall see. With that, we have a uh, call to the public. Uh, Ms. Lambert, do we have any call to the public? Yes, sir. May I, let me ask one other thing. Do we have, is it all call to the public or is any of it have to do with any items on the you have to deal with specific agenda items, yes. Okay, well then let's let's divide those up and we'll do call the public first, please. Meanwhile, 
Architect Albert Cooper has produced two City Hall concept designs at no cost. One to rebuild the old building and another for a brand new facility at the corner of Taylor Avenue and State Route 92. Rebuilding the old structure would exceed the city's budget, but Hopper's new facility design included valid contractor bids that were within the city's budget. What has not been explored thoroughly yet is continuing is to continue using Cochise County's facility on Tavrizo Road and construct, construct additional space there as needed. Based on what I know, I believe that this will be the least expensive option and we will leave much of our budget that could be used for other city expenses. I further believe that we should stop wasting time on suggesting that we can rebuild the old city hall building within budget particularly if all safeguards listed above are in place, and not doing so would be a recipe for disaster. Unless someone gives us a million dollars to supplement our budget, please start focusing on enhancing a suitable city hall facility at the current Tavrival site. Sincerely, Al Anderson. Thank you. Call to the public, Donald Foley. Good evening. My comment has to do with the confusion created by the new practice of reading all public comments during the call to the public. During a previous meeting one year ago on June 18, 2019, the mayor restricted the public from using call to the public to address items listed on the agenda. That meeting pertained to the sale of the first floor of the library and where a full house of people signed up to speak. The mayor read off the names of everyone signed up to speak and asked if they were addressing the library sale agenda item during call to the public. If so, they would not be permitted to speak during call to the public, but had to wait until the item came up on the agenda. No comments about any item on the agenda were to be made during call to the public. Now, since the meetings are closed due to COVID, all public comments are read during the call to the public. Even when these items are on the agenda, and have been requested to be read at the time when the item comes up for discussion. I would ask the mayor to please make up his mind. Are we supposed to have comments read during call to the public or during the actual agenda item as he previously directed? Please read my next question regarding item number 12 on this agenda during discussion of <coughs> item number 12 regarding the 1% tax increase. Thank you, Donna Cole. Thank you. Call to the public, Ben Wetley. Hello, Mayor and Council. I am writing this follow-up to my previous letter to you in regards to saving the City Hall shell. Myself, Lithic Construction, and Kartner Engineering are working on two informal proposals intended for public discussion in regards to saving the shell. The first proposal is to stabilize the shell but rebuild a lightweight, bare bones steel structure inside to be used as the city hall. This proposal will take a lot of effort for our team to develop and still try to meet the budget available. We are, working, we are still working on that. It won't be easy, but may be possible. The second proposal attached is to save the shell and use it for an alter, alternate use as a single story structure with a covered courtyard space with trees. This could cost anywhere from $350,000 to $500,000. The structure could be used as a clinic, offices, care home, new animal hospital, or a farmer's market. Some of you have previously shown support for saving the shell, have already received my presentation. Again, the intent here is to allow the public an opportunity to know and discuss the possibilities before council takes a vote on what direction to go. I feel public input and discussion, as conducted before, is the only honest and transparent path forward. Thanks, Ben Lepley. And I do have an attachment which I can distribute via email. That's great. And let's also then, um, um, Madam Clerk, um, that'll be posted with the, 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 uh, the yes. minutes. I'm mm -hmm. sorry. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> Thank you. Increase public comment. 
Hello, I wanted to voice my objection to the increase in sales tax. Okay, let's hold that then, please. Okay. And this is a public, public comment Copper Queen Hotel Pride Party. Mark and Debbie Gardner. We are 100% opposed to this party. The local pride organization has canceled all events out of safety. We are already inundated in our neighborhood with tourists who do not social distance or wear masks. Having people come from areas that have much higher infection rates is ridiculous. The Queen already has live music events and the rules aren't followed. It is very sad that some value profit over lives. Mark and Debbie Gardner. Call to the public, Claire Chafee. COVID-19 is here and looks to stay for a little while. There is so much going on with masks, social distancing, PPEs, etc., and with the emotions from everybody. The mayor of Tucson was back on television discussing how the governor should at least give the mayors the ability to impose certain restrictions. Maybe y'all should sit down, sit him down and talk. Not every city and county are alike. He wants to treat the whole state the same. We are not. Tucson is starting to ascend again. We are going up higher. We have opened our businesses. This is all well and good. But like you say, you weigh assisting the business owner versus the health of the city. But they don't, but they just don't want to listen. If that was me, you would have fined me the $2,500 in a heartbeat. We are back to pick and choose. So we can't blame it on people coming in and out. It's the locals. As the figures keep going up, I think all of that nonsense of not listening needs to be addressed. They wanted to reopen. That's their livelihood. If you expect the rest of the businesses to comply, and they are, then the ones who think they don't, don't have to. They don't have to open. Their carelessness could cost people their lives, and that isn't having a good time. Thank you for your time, Claire J.P. Thank you. So we have two more letters uh, from on tax. Um, um, I have three for item number 12. That's yeah. right. Thank you. I want to, as soon as I get to that item, we'll, we'll read those. And thank you so much. Okay, moving right along. Uh, accounts payable. I move that we pay accounts payable in the amount of $191,407.87. Thank you. Do we have a second? Second. Do we have a motion? We have a second. Do we have any questions? Yeah. Ms. Kathleen. Uh, page one. It's a uh, charge for $12,912 for capital incorporated. What's that for? Would you pull that, pull that mic over? Uh, That's all right, Kathleen Thank you. Okay. Um, also on page five, I thought we removed all the water from the cemetery. Is there still a connection? I look up. Is that why we're being charged $57 still? My understanding when I talked to you about that and said the water was removed from the cemetery. And it says, oh, is that public works? Oh, okay. No, it says cemetery. Douglas Street Cemetery. Yeah, okay, it is. Page five, if you go down, there's $57.20. Why would we still be getting charged that if we have no service? We don't have service there. We removed that meter, so. Could that maybe be a late cost? Or I thought it's been removed a long time ago. That's our sewer and garbage service. Oh, is that what it is? Oh, yes, sorry. Oops. Oops. Oh, okay. Sorry. My mistake. Sorry. Um, there was another, oh, here it is. On um, page six, Homestead Park, 243. Is that because you're filling or are you guys overly watering again? No, I remember that, that one has the, the large meter on there, so the okay, base so that's bill. The base bill? Okay. Sixty some odd dollars, and then yes, we did use. We have been paying and, and filling up there. Okay, so Lower Vista and Paul Park are both sixty dollar bills. Paul Park is all dirt. 
uh, why is everybody else twenty-eight dollars? And there's sixty something dollars that falls all there. I'd have to look at the meter. I, I'm, I'm fairly confident that's the meter. It's everything is shut off there. In fact, there are right. some there are some services that I'm going to completely shut off. Okay. And remove just like we did it. It just didn't make sense because everybody else is twenty-five dollars, and those two are like three times that well, well, sixty-five dollars, not three times the place. Um, and every time we do, I guess this is just a general question. Every time we have this, uh, we always see equipment. Like uh, every now and then there's a saw or there's, you know, I mean, stuff that's not disposable. Do you have a complete inventory of all equipment? We currently do not, but we are, we do have a plan to, to move going forward and just met with our finance department. Mm -hmm. And so we do have a plan where we will be inventorying um, those types of tools. Right. I mean, in fact, we, the finance department has created a new plan so that we can separate those more. Um, better define what is a disposable tool right. and what is a tool that's not necessarily disposable. Uh, like so, those are not disposable. Right, because we'll we, start to the resort, though, we asked there. about this back when we were in the, the other building, then the county building, mm -hmm. because every time you go, there's hammer here and there's, you know, screwdriver here, and, and it's like, well, how do you know what you have and who's, and are you sure it's not walking off or getting left places? Or That's why I ask if you don't have some kind of check on the system. We are implementing that now. Thanks. Anybody else? All those in favor of obtaining the council payable state of the state of Aye. Opposed, nay. Thank you. Uh, motion passes unanimously. Uh, consent agenda one, one item. That would be a approval of the minutes of the regular session of mayor and council held on June 2nd, 2020 at 7 p.m. I move to approve the minutes of the regular session of mayor and council held on June 2nd, 2020 at 7 p.m. I'll second that. Who's going on? Mayor Pro Tem Pollock. Aye. Council Member Giacomino. Aye. Council Member Higgins. Aye. Council Member Johns. Aye. Council Member Klein. Aye. Mayor Smith. Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Item three, under old business. Discussion of possible approval of ordinance 020-. 10, amending Article 4.5.1, rates and establishing Article 4.5.2, ambulance subscriptions and providing for repeal and severability. This will be what we would call normally the second reading. Ms. Uh, does anybody have any questions for Ms. Coleman? Hearing none, do we have a motion? I move to approve ordinance 0-20-10. Amending Article 4.5.1, rates and establishing Article 4.5.2, ambulance subscriptions and providing for appeal and serviceability. I'll second that. Ms. Cornell. Mayor Pro Tem Pollock. Aye. Council Member Giacomino. Aye. Council Member Higgins. Aye. Council Member Johns. Aye. Council Member Klein. Aye. Mayor Smith. Aye. Motion passes uh, five to one. Item number four, discussion of possible approval of ordinance 02011, accepting the transfer of real property held by the mining claim in the Saginaw neighborhood. Again, this is the second uh, bite of this apple. Uh, does anybody have any questions of Ms. Coleman? Hearing none, may I have a motion? I move that we approve ordinance 0 20 21, accepting the transfer of real property held by mining claim in the Saginaw neighborhood. All set. Thank you. Ms. Klein seconds that. Mayor Pro Tem Pollock? Aye. Councilmember Giacomino? Aye. Councilmember Higgins? Aye. Councilmember Johns? Aye. Councilmember Klein? Aye. Mayor Smith? Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Item number five under new business. Discussion of possible approval of resolution R2019, a resolution of the mayor and city council, city of Bisbee, County of Cochise, State of Arizona, fixing, levying, and assessing the amount to be raised by the city of Bisbee from property taxation and fixing and determining the property tax rate for the 2020-2021 fiscal year and providing for severability. Ms. Bagley, Finance Director, welcome. Um, Mayor and Council, this is a resolution to raise the fiscal year 
2021 property tax levy by the maximum amount allowable of 2%. <clears throat> this will generate an additional 48,215 in revenue for the general fund. Um, and amounts to an additional $5.88 per $100,000 of assessed property value um, for the tax payment. Thank you, ma'am. Questions? Hearing none, do we have a motion? I move to approve resolution R-20-19, fixing levy and assessing the amount to be raised by the city of Bisbee for property taxation and fixing and determining the property tax rate for the 2021 fiscal year in the amount of 2,900 and, oh, wait. <laughs> two, yeah, I guess that's, yeah, 2.9954 for $100 of assessed valuation Thank you, sir. I'll second that. Mayor Pro Tem Pollock? Aye. Councilmember Giacomino? Nay. Councilmember Higgins? Aye. Councilmember Jones? Aye. Councilmember Klein? Aye. Mayor Smith? Aye. Motion passes 5 to 1. Item number 6. Discussion of possible approval of a contract with fireworks productions of Arizona for the 4th of July fireworks. Mr. Castillo, Fire Chief. Welcome, Chief. Welcome. Thank you, Mayor Council. Um, this is for a possible approval of a contract with uh, fireworks production out of Arizona for the 4th of July. Um, we've used fireworks production for uh, many years, and every year we, we do this contract. Um, last year, just let everybody know, we had a uh, $6,500 show. Um, this year, I want to thank you, Council, for increasing uh, an extra 2000 so we're here 5000 uh, contribu contributing to uh, the union also uh, through donations. And from the union, we uh, got another $3,500, so we're going to have a $5,000 show this year, so it should be a really good show. Terrific. That's great news, Chief. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll, we'll be discussing down the road the uh, logistics of uh, live streaming this also for, for those that uh, can't or don't want to get out. Uh, so that's, that's great. We're going to have a, a great show. We've had to cancel the other uh, the other 4th of July activities. So this, uh, this will be fun. Thank you. I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Do the guys may I, may I, let's get a motion then a second. Oh, okay. then, thank you for part of my... I move to approve the contract with Firewatch Production of Arizona for the 4th of July fireworks. Second. Thank you. Ms. Uh, Jacqueline. So the guys that shoot up the fireworks, are they certified? Do they have to get certified to shoot fireworks? Yes, most of our guys that are the liars, um, myself included, uh, had to go to a fire shooter school. Uh, we were going to send some employees this year, but it was canceled due to COVID. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, we do have to have that training. The ones that don't have the training, they're pretty much just going to be what we call runners, where they just run the fireworks to the loader and the loader. Okay, thank you. Anything else? Yes, ma'am. Just, just to add a comment to that, um, you know, the way they shoot the fireworks off today is what they've done forever. I mean, very old fashioned from when my dad used to set them off. And, uh, you know, a lot of people don't realize what work goes into it and how they're using, you know, Room handles and you know things like that, and uh, so it's it's actually you know quite the production up there. It is. So thank you guys very much for that. We appreciate it. It is. Uh, most other places are using electronic boards. Mm -hmm. And are we going to let the old fashioned dangerous way? How old are you? How old are you? We do. We are uh, very safety about it. Everybody's in their full turnouts. Of course. We have, uh, Briefings before that, sir. Follow my phone. You got it. All right. Do we have a motion? We, uh, we did. We did. One. Yeah, yeah we, did. we did. We did. I have a question. Did you have, you have a question? Yes, Mr. Okay. Of the city manager, what account does this money come out of? Ours. Or we just moved that over to the park, the parks? Yes. It was out of ours, and now it's been moved to parks. Park. Uh, for, yeah, start three days from 
Yeah, three days before the issue. Yeah. Is there a way that people can make contributions oh, yes. to offset yeah. this amount? Oh, yes. Okay. Thank you. And, and they have in the past, uh, Council, uh, uh, Mayor Pro Tem. Um, all they have to do is drop a check by and put on the bottom of the fireworks. I'll do that tomorrow morning. Excellent. So we can count another 3,500? Uh, 2,500. Oh, okay. <laughs> hey, just try. 25 yeah. people out of this need to cover this cost. I'm sure there's 25 people. Who can afford that I'm cost. sure there are, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Anything else? All right. Uh, Ms. Coronado is a contract, so. Mayor Pro Tem Pollock. Aye. Councilmember Giacomino. Aye. Councilmember Higgins. Aye. Councilmember Johns. Aye. Councilmember Klein. Aye. Mayor Smith. Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Thanks, Chief. <laughs> Item 7 Discussion of possible approval of an intergovernmental agreement between Southeast Arizona Communications, known as CECOM, and the Bisbee Police Department, authorizing Chief of Police Albert Achade to sign this agreement as the authorized representative of the Bisbee Police Department in providing dispatching services during a catastrophic event for either agency. Chief. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, so what you have is two agreements. Uh, one agreement that basically uh, covers uh, Bisbee in the event that we need a little help from CECOM. Uh, the agreement allows them to cover us, and then the other agreement is if CECOM needs help, uh, it affords us the ability to help them uh, with the new integrated 911 system. Uh, a dispatcher can sit in one console uh, at CECOM and log in. They can come to Bisbee and log in to our console, and it'll look exactly like theirs does at home. Our dispatchers could go to CECOM and log into theirs the same way. Uh, we're all almost filming the same, so that works as well. As we continue to work toward our radio project, uh, the consoles that will be installed into our dispatch center will be the same radio consoles that are in SECOM, um, allowing us to work, uh, have those communications. And the officers on the street wouldn't know if they were talking to Disney or to Sirius and the event of that week. Any your questions? Ms. Klein. Okay, so this is only for emergency purposes, correct? That is correct. Okay, so our dispatchers are still hours for Very the day. Very much so, yes. Okay, thank yes. you. Only an emergency, um, and if you, if you look at it, it covers, it allows us to cover each other, uh, I believe, for two weeks, uh, and then anything after that, there would be, uh, you know, if, if they had a catastrophic failure at their building that was going to put them out of commission for a number of months, then after two weeks there would be a, a negotiated fee associated with that. Same with us, if we had a prolonged outage, there would be a negotiated fee to cover that side as well. This gives us two weeks to uh, uh, kind of take care of one another. Great. Any other questions? Uh, Ms. Coronado? Okay. Mayor, Call the roll for the IGA. Um, did we, we didn't motion? have a motion. Oh, do we need a motion? Yes, sir. <laughs> I prefer you just call the roll. We'll see how everybody stands in. Maybe. I'd be happy to when, once there's a motion. <laughs> I, I move to approve the intergovernmental agreement between Southeastern Arizona Communications, CECOM, and the Bisbee Police Department, authorizing Chief of Police <coughs> Albert Machave to sign this agreement as the authorized representative of the Bisbee Police Department in providing dispatching services during a catastrophic catastrophic event or events for either agency. I'll second. Mayor Pro Tem Pollock. Aye. Councilmember Giacomino. Aye. Councilmember Higgins. Aye. Councilmember Johns. Aye. Councilmember Klein. Aye. Mayor Smith. Aye. Motion passes unanimously. I remember eight discussion of possible approval to enter into a lease purchase agreement with NCO Government Capital for a new way diamond garbage, diamond back <laughs> garbage truck. Sorry, I read diamond and I thought. Uh, okay. 
That was your personal guarantee on that, Chief, by the way. <laughs> Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of the Council. Uh, to this agenda, item, we're asking to enter into a lease purchase agreement for a new garbage truck. Um, this garbage truck is used for the old Bisbee area. It's a smaller garbage truck. The uh, garbage truck, we, the new garbage truck that we're looking to um, lease purchase is the same size as the current vehicle that we are using. And the current one we have is a 2012 Nissan UV, which is in awful shape. It's, it seems like it's in the shop more than we have been being used. Um, it's either in our shop or in the shop in Tucson because of the the um, Nissan and being able to read the error codes. It's got a lot of sensory error codes that come up on that. Um, NC, um, NCL Government Capital it ha is a um, competitively bid um, provider. They do source well. Um, the, um, back to one question. Well, I do. Just showing my ignorance. Uh, is uh, Diamondback a, a, a name of a manufacturer? It's the name of so it's the name of the container itself. So the, the vehicle itself, the the, the driving right. driving portion is it is a cab over Isuzu, and then the the trash container portion of this is the Diamondback portion. So okay. it's put together very similar to what I'm doing with the bus. Okay, with the box on it. Yes. So it's most of our problems then having to do with the drive portion of the engine. Correct. Drive. It's, the NISA. it's not necessarily the trash container portion of our current vehicle, it's the actual vehicle itself. Yeah. And this this will be an Isuzu. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, ma'am. So you have issues with the Nissan, mm -hmm. which is a foreign model. That yes. makes you think you're not gonna have the same with the Isuzu. I couldn't tell you that we would I would hope not. I mean it's a new it will be a new vehicle under warranty. So I, how long is the warranty for? I would I, I couldn't tell you that exactly. It was a new vehicle. I didn't know that at least three three years, thirty six thousand miles is pretty standard. But there's not a ton of places that make garbage trucks. This is yes, so this is true. And then the size of the garbage truck itself is a difficult one to find because uh, if we were going to go with a standard size garbage truck, we would probably have a lot more options to available to us. This is a smaller vehicle that we uh, use in general business. We have to have that size vehicle. You bet. Any other questions? Yes, yeah. Ms. Glenn. Oh, I'm um, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. If we do get this, when do you expect to take possession of it? It will take them about four months to get it. Um, so it, the the chassis, the vehicle and chassis itself, I believe, is in California, and it will be delivered to um, Phoenix, and it will be put together there in Phoenix. So approximately four months. Okay. So then, when we get it, um, are we going to go back to picking up trash in Old Bisbee like we used to? It will afford us the opportunity to. Um, we currently can't right now because we the way we did it before is we had our inventory helping us picking up hand. Um, we do have some options that are uh, available. It will, it will give us more options. Um, we will be able to maybe put out some, um, a larger amount of, of stations. Right now we, can, we have to use the dumpsters and therefore we can't use a smaller truck because a smaller truck doesn't pick up dumpsters. We have to use a larger truck. That's why we only are able to take that larger truck along Tombstone Canyon and Drury Avenue. Once we have the smaller truck, we at minimum will be able to um, preliminary looking at 86 different stations without within Old Bisbee um, to instead of the two roads that we have. Okay. It will give us the opportunity though if we do get in a fact to do that all. Okay. Sir. Yeah, actually my question was the same as uh, Dana's. Uh, uh, to a certain extent, um, uh, this, this uh, would replace that small uh, garbage pickup truck that you used when you were picking up by hand. Correct. And uh, so that would enable you to have more stations for pickup? Yes. So um, but it's still not hand loaded? Conceptually, we, we've been looking at different methods um, once we go back to more, once we get out of this, this pandemic time. 
um, different methods. We definitely can go back if we are able to get our inmates back to doing a hand pickup. Um, I don't know that that's going to be available to us, so we definitely are visiting at different plans. And those those plans do include purchasing more of the 95 gallon um, rollouts that most other residents within Bisbee have, and we have stations. And like I said, I think it's if I remember correctly, 86 different stations throughout Old Bisbee. So it won't be that you have to go all the way to Tombstone Canyon or Brewer Avenue. You should have something very close to your house. Well, this would make it more convenient for the residents to get their garbage to the truck. Definitely, uh, yes. And it, at, currently, we're not using that old truck, but I guess it doesn't work anyhow. But uh, uh, but this would uh, enable you to do that. Yes, absolutely. All right. Any other questions? Motion. I move to enter into a lease purchase agreement with uh, NCL Government Capital for a new uh, new way to have that garbage truck. Second. We have a motion, we have a second. Mr. Nello? Mayor Pro Tem Pollock? Aye. Councilmember Giacomino? Aye. Councilmember Higgins? Aye. Councilmember Johns? Aye. Councilmember Klein? Aye. Mayor Smith? Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Moving on to item number nine discussion of possible approval of resolution R2020, supporting the City of Bisbee's formal adoption of the City of Bisbee's Transportation Amended Title VI Plan. Mr. Howard. Mr. Mayor, members of council, uh, this is a resolution that uh, supports our non-discriminatory plan that's required uh, for us to adopt in order for us to accept the federal money that we get through our 5311 grant to our bus program. Um, I believe it's just a couple of minor changes that have come from ADOT, I mean, from some formatting and some um, language that has changed within the alcohol portion of the uh, plan. Do we do this every year? I'm sorry. We do it every two years. Every two years, thank you. Thank you. Any, any other questions? Do we have a motion? I move to approve resolution R-20-20 in support of the City of Bisbee's formal adoption of the City of Bisbee's transits. City of Bisbee Transit's amended Title VI plan. Second. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. How are you going to do this? The, how are you going to do the survey? Believe it, uh, the, we do the survey by handing it out when, when uh, passengers get on the bus. So yeah. they're to complete it while they're riding the bus? Or? They can they complete it there, they can give it to the drivers, or they can give it, they can bring it to public works. Or they can give it to the driver the next time they get on. Yeah, absolutely, they can, they can give it to the driver the next time. I mean, we, if, if somebody wanted to fill out it, we, we could provide it via email or however they would like to mail it. Anything else? Uh -huh. Mr. Adam? Mayor Pro Tem Pollock? Aye. Councilmember Giacomino? Aye. Councilmember Higgins? Aye. Councilmember Johns? Aye. Councilmember Klein? Aye. Mayor Smith? Uh, motion passes unanimously, item number 10. Thank you, Mr. Harrell. Discussion of possible approval of a contract for publishing services uh, slash official newspaper of record with the Bisbee Observer. Ms. Coronado. Good evening, Council. Um, this is the annual contract for publishing services. We have to go out to bid every year. Um, this year we only received one bid, and that was from the Bisbee Observer. Um, there is a small increase. Um, it w was three dollars and seventy seventy five cents per column inch. It has gone up to four dollars per column inch. Any questions? Do we have a motion? I move to approve the contract for publishing services, official newspaper of record with the Bisbee Observer. I'll second that. Ms. Cornell, when you're ready. Mayor Pro Tem Pollock. Aye. Councilmember Giacomino? Aye. Councilmember Higgins? Aye. Councilmember Johns? Aye. Councilmember Klein? Aye. Mayor Smith? Aye. Motion passes unanimously. <clears throat> Item 11 Discussion of possible approval of an intergovernmental agreement with Cochise County for Election Services. Ms. Coronado? Thank you. 
Um, this IGA with Cochise County, um, we do it every two years, and it's to provide election services. Um, they will provide the vote centers, the poll books, poll workers. They do program and send out the ballots. We do prepare the language for the ballots along with the publicity pamphlets, and we also get those printed on our own. Um, but they do take care of all the ballots and the mailing of all of those early ballots and regular ballots. Um, there was an increase. Um, they used to do a $500 flat fee. This has gone up to $800 this year per election, but there is a lot more included in this contract than in previous years. Thank you, ma'am. Do we have any questions? Do we have a motion? I move. <laughs> you know what? I move to approve the intergovernmental agreement with Cochise County for our election services. Second. Thank you. We have a motion. We have a second. Ms. Troyano, you're busy today. Mayor Pro Tem Pollock. Aye. Council Member Giacomino. Aye. Council Member Higgins. Aye. Council Member Johns. Aye. Council Member Klein. Aye. Mayor Smith. Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Item number 12. Discussion possible approval of resolution R2014, submitting to the electors at the general election of November 2nd, 2020, a proposition to increase the transaction privilege tax by an additional 1% dedicated to essential services with a six year sunset. Uh, Ms. Coleman, first, can we have those? I have three, three uh, comments. Yeah. For the public thank you ma'am thank you uh, hello i wanted to voice my objection to the increase in sales tax if the covid doesn't kill small retail business this tax hike certainly will it's obscene retail is difficult enough with online giants like amazon wayfair and walmart walmart please consider figuring out how to balance a budget instead of bleeding our economy dry the city offers minimal services for such a tax rate. It's completely unjustified. Sincerely, Tara Peters. Thank you, ma'am. Mayor and Council, I will keep this relatively short as I have been on a roll lately and I'm tired of everything going on in this city right now. Why do we need a 1% sales tax? Why be greedy? Can't it be 5%? Oh, 0.5%, 0 0.25%. We need to learn to live within our means and not spend money we don't have. We always need more and more. Now, essential services, what are they? Somewhere in there, I read health and safety. Interesting. Is that picking up animal feces in the city? That would definitely fit. Washing down any kind of outside Equipment used, wash city vehicles, justify it. You can't say what it's for. You don't get it simple. Thank you, Claire Chafee. Thank you. My questions are for the city manager. One, could you please tell us what essential services are? Two, please explain why this term is not defined in the resolution and will it be defined on the ballot measure to be voted on in November? Three, are police and fire essential services? Will this tax increase be used for salary increases? Four, are wastewater, sanitation, public works, library, and parks finance considered essential services? Will this tax increase be for salary increases? This resolution hints at what essential services might be, stating that the city can no longer continue to provide the same level of services vital to the health and safety of the citizens. That additional revenues are needed to meet the necessary expenses to maintain the current level of essential government services to provide a clean and safe community that is nurturing and attractive to residents and current and future businesses. In 
So typically when we speak of essential services, we automatically think of police and fire. But in fact, public works, if we think about it, it, it it's every bit important, if I could, that if you flush your toilet, that's an essential service as well as the police officer arriving at your front door or the fire department arriving to put your fire out. So essential services, if I could wrap this up, essential services are really something that the council would have to decide at the time uh, as to what is essential based on citizens' input to us. So we, it, it'd be very difficult for us to say this 1% goes to only to police, fire, and public works because that wouldn't be fair to some people that believe other things would be essential also. So it would be up, to, the answer is it's up to the council as to what essential services are but not really until a time comes that that determination has to be made. I move to approve resolution R-20-14 submitted to the electors at the general election of November 3rd, 2020, the designated proposition to increase the transaction service tax by an additional 1% dedicated to essential services with a six-year sense. Yes, ma'am, I saw that. And I'll second it so that you can ask your question, please. Yeah, and you, you, yeah, you can go home. Uh, my other, I guess it's not, it's more of a statement than a question. Can you clarify too for the public that what we are approving is for the public to make the choice to vote, am I correct? Oh, absolutely. absolutely. So uh, that has been a question. Uh, some people have thought that by us passing this tonight that it's a done deal. But I'm asking for clarification that by us passing it, it's putting it on the uh, ballot. Thank you for the word. Putting it on the ballot, and the people are going to get to make the choice. If they do not want it, they can vote it down, correct? That, that well, is Arizona yeah. state law. Okay, that's why I just wanted that clarified, because I've had a few people asking me that, and I just wanted it clarified. Yeah. 
no, the air, the voter has to vote on right. uh, a tax question, yes. Mr. Potter. Yes, Mr. Mayor, I have a question for you. How much money are we busy going to receive from the CARES Act through the governor's office? You know? I do. Can you uh, share that with us? $599,825. Okay. This tax requested tax increase is going to sink or swim uh, based on what the people of this, based on how well the city of Bisbee can sell this proposed increase to the public. Absolutely. And I think, and this is a comment, given the situation that we have in the economy right now and the lack of funding coming from the federal government through the state, uh, we're in a serious position, situation right now. And all I can say is if we're going to come out of this as a viable community, we're going to need to really do an effective job of selling the need for this tax increase. Right. And of course, we're going to have to be able to um, establish those needs in order to sell them. And so we're not in a position to establish those needs yet. We only have our, our March figures. Um, the April and May figures are going to be, the, and, and June, of course, are going to be the real telling ones at this particular point. And that's only assuming that this thing goes away sometime in, in, in July. Um, but um, we will be able, I am very, unfortunately, I'm very sure that we're going to be able to uh, show the need for this. Uh, that five hundred, that six hundred thousand uh, dollars has to be earmarked for public safety, um, and uh, with a public safety budget of, of uh, uh, two and a half million dollars, you can see that that is gone very, very quickly, and that there's a deficit there. So it, it certainly won't be a, a, an issue that we have too much money. Uh, and uh, the only question is just how short are we going to be and um, we will be finding that out and we will be able to demonstrate that to the public. Thank you. Surely. Anything else? Ms. Coronado? Mayor Pro Tem Pollock? Aye. Council Member Giacomino? Aye. Council Member Higgins? Aye. Council Member Johns? Aye. Council Member Klein? Aye. Mayor Smith? Aye, motion passes five to one. Uh, item number. Well, that's it. Item number 13 now. The city manager's report. I, I'm allowed one mistake tonight, not two. Thank you. Um, we had hoped to bring you uh, actually a proposal that you could accept uh, for an ambulance purchase. Um, I guess. That's the bad news is we didn't get it here today. The good news is that we found additional opportunities that we want to be able to bid before we bring them to you um, so that we can offer you the best value for the money that uh, is available for that purchase. So we will um, be putting out an RFP in the next 15 days and that will give us time to come to your next council meeting with results, uh, both bids. And we don't have anything else. Okay, Mr. Uh, Mr. Potlick. Two things I wanted to mention. The first is uh, an article that was written by Laura Swan in the Bisbee Observer. Uh, I believe it was an interview of Chief Castillo. Fire Chief gets candid about safety, MOUs, IFTs, and revenues. Uh, this is one of the best articles I've read in the Bisbee Observer since I came to Bisbee three and a half years ago. I've made copies of it for anyone that's interested. If they haven't read it, I encourage you to do so. Uh, it is candid, and it touches on some very important points. So thank you, Chief. Well, great job. Uh, the other item that I'd like to mention, we discussed agenda item eight, the June 2nd council meeting which uh, pertains to the pay down of the PSPRS debt that we have. 
and in that agenda item are unfunded actuar actuarial accrued liability is twenty one million two hundred and seventy eight thousand dollars and nine hundred two hundred and seventy eight nine eighty one. Uh, our minimum annual, I believe is the annual pay, payout, is $1,460,939 to be paid over a 27 year period. I just want to point out to the council and to everybody in Bisbee, if we pay only that amount for the next 27 years, we're paying almost $40 million for a $21 million debt. Uh, that's mind-boggling to me, especially uh, given the fact that this is a pay-forward situation. Like, there's no loan, there's no dollar amount in our hands. We're sending these huge amounts of money somewhere and crossing our fingers, hoping that they generate some kind of revenue so that they're solvent in 27 years from now. Uh, I just want everybody to give that a little bit of thought and don't think too hard on it. <laughs> so that's pretty scary, at least in the end. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Ms. Jack Neal. So I just wanted uh, to let the council be aware of the fact that there is a group of people that are getting together a presentation proposal to uh, share with you ideas of either the rebuilding or the refurbishing of the shell of City Hall. Statement was made prior that if anyone had any ideas for funding or rebuilding of it, they should step forward. So these people have. And I would also like to address the personal attack by Mr. Anderson at the beginning of this meeting. At no time has uh, Mr. Anderson ever contacted me or spoken to me on the innuendos and um, pretty much blatant lies that I have said that we are going to overlook procurement and insurance and um, all the other rumors he specifically thing that he stated um, that I'm supposedly attached to. Uh, he does have my number and my contact information, so I find it interesting that he didn't contact me and ask my opinion before he wrote his letter to be publicly um, stated. I would suggest in the future, if people have any um, concerns as to what I'm thinking, that they might try contacting me first. I'd be more than happy to share my opinions with them instead of them believing um, bogus stories that um, other people have put together. Uh, one last thing I'd like to say um, is I personally would like to, and this has nothing to do with this, but I would personally like to extend the deepest sympathies to the Oldfield family for the loss of Dan, who was a, a big person in our community, and um, his presence will be lost. And uh, again, I would like to extend the deepest sympathies to the Oldfields. Thank you. I move that we adjourn. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor of adjourn, let's say by stating aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Who stand adjourned? Second.